All right, everybody, I'd like to introduce our first presentation here at the Planet Microtap Showcase Vancouver in association with Small Cap Discoveries. Giving this presentation is Neil Sweeney from Reclaim. Thanks, Bobby. Okay, so this is a good spot for us to do the presentation. You never want to be the last presentation in the day because you're keeping everybody from the bar. But the downside is that anything technically that can go wrong happens with the first presentation. So in that way, you're a bit of the guinea pig. Um, I'm sure everybody here is going to see lots of different stories. This story is really easy for everybody to understand, and I always kind of frame it up this way. Um, take yourself out of the investing mindset for one second and kind of look at this as a, a consumer play is that when, when I created this company six years ago, it was a derivative in my last company, which was also public. It was really based on this idea that there's 8 billion people on the planet today. You're one of them. Every single one of those individuals has a data profile. Nobody has any access to that data. Nobody knew, knows who has that data, where it's being used. But I think we, as people in the business community, can appreciate that our data is being collected, amalgamated, arbitraged, and used as a free input to power pretty much every business around the world. You as a consumer have no optionality or any control of that, and we felt that there needed to be a platform and a place really for consumers to vend in. So that was the philosophy of Reclaim. How do we create a royalty system for consumers where by giving them control of their data, we could actually give them compensation for their individual data. So this QR code uh, is where you can download the application. You don't have to take my word on anything that I say as it relates to the application. You can literally see it in real time. Um, you can go through, you can follow along with how the company is actually progressing because you can be both a consumer with this company as well as a, an individual investor. We trade in Canada. I'm Canadian. Um, we also trade on the OTC. Uh, while we're founded in Canada, all of our business is in the United States. Quick disclaimer, everybody knows how that works. All right, so the capital structure, we'll start with this just off the hop. Um, we'll focus on the TSX. So this is about 116 million shares outstanding. I'm the single largest shareholder. Um, I invested all my, I invested a bunch of money into this business um, to really start the technology so that uh, I own about 35% of the individual company. Um, so it's something to kind of keep in mind when you're thinking about investing in this business. I'm anti-dilution, as you can probably appreciate, right? So um, sometimes people fixate on 116 million shares being there. This is a very tight stock. Um, I think the one problem that the stock has is really nobody knows about it because we're inherently not that promotional. Uh, 10 million market cap, trades at eight cents now, Last year at this time, it went from three to nine. So we're actually trading below where we were last year. Um, one other thing that there's no cheap warrants, no cheap paper um, in, this, in, this, in this cap structure. Um, as I said before, it's relatively tight. So just here's a bit of a boilerplate. Um, we offer privacy compliant consumer data to advertising brands. Think General Motors, UPS, Unilever, et cetera. Agencies, think Omnicom, Media Group, Group M, et cetera. And technology platforms, think Snowflake, Amazon, Trade Desk, et cetera. Uh, um, we allow consumers to sign up and actually reclaim their data. So just again, as a consumer, you can go to Reclaim today. You can put in a phone number or an email address. We'll verify who you say you are to, through two-step verification. Once you're in there, we'll do one thing that nobody else in the world does today. We will show you all of the data that is currently circulating on you online today. Um, once you have seen that data, you'll be able to reclaim it into an identity wallet that is controlled by you at Reclaim, at which point you can edit it, add it, add to it, delete it, or directly option it to a brand for its use. When it's used, you will be paid in fiat, crypto. You can also choose to take gift cards if you want. Um, so as I said before, a royalty system for consumers. Um, we're the only company in the world that is doing this today. There's been about 12 companies that have tried to do this. Every single one of them has gone broke. You'll see from the financial statement that we've been around for six years, and not only have we been able to do it, we've actually been able to create a profitable business. Okay, so a couple of things just around to kind of set the table here specifically about Reclaim, and then we'll get into uh, kind of the minutia around the financials. Everybody, when they're looking at a company, wants to know what's the catalyst for growth? What are the tailwinds? Um, I, I'd say for us, there's a ton of tailwinds as it relates to this overall industry. In pers in, it, first and foremost, as I said before, there's eight, the overall market is 8 billion people. Technically, 
every single person could be an actual client of, of Reclaim. And as I said before, because we're the only one in the market, creates a huge opportunity for us to actually uh, vend into. The overall global data market is a $750 billion data market. Sounds like a big number. The most important piece about that $750 billion is that it's happening in the background. The days of collecting data unbeknownst to consumers to be used as a free input are quickly going to zero. And this is an important part. So we've seen this in automotive where you're moving from combustion to EV or in retail, bricks and mortar to online. The same thing is actually happening in the data market. You are moving from an opaque consumer excluded market to a privacy first consumer included market. So the traditional firms think Oracle and others are on roller skates right now. In fact, Oracle actually just left this business altogether. They had a billion dollar data business they walked from due to actual uh, class action lawsuits and inability to remain compliant. So our opportunity is to participate in the 8 billion people and the $750 billion market that is transitioning to a consumer included market. We obviously have the consumer because when you actually work with Reclaim, you're buying data directly from the consumer. The other couple big trends that are actually happening specifically this notion of antitrust. So a lot of the traditional big data firms and traditional big firms in this space are being broken up. That is, they've gobbled up a lot of the demand and the money in the actual advertising and marketing space. It creates more opportunity for us. This is an FYI, we actually work with Google, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. The other two things, which we'll get into later in the presentation, is that this is a huge change. There's been 18 new, new privacy laws or new states that have introduced privacy laws since January of last year. Privacy, I appreciate, is very boring. Nobody wants to talk about that. The important thing to understand here is that what's happening is that each individual, each individual state is changing the law to say you cannot collect this data without the active participation in the, with the consumer back to the transition of the $750 billion market. So this is a trend that is accelerating month over month over month, which is forcing everybody who's historically bought that data to go back into the market to find a new player or to find a new partner. That's where Reclaim stands to benefit. The other two things which I'm sure everybody here is impacted by is this massive increase in data breaches and security. I'll get into this later as to some of the things that we're working on in this space. Everybody in this room's data has been hacked 100% in the last 12 months. I can pretty much guarantee you of that. You as a consumer are left on the hook when a Rogers, an AT&T, a Life Labs, or a Ticketmaster actually leaks your data. They get fined, they pay that fine, but your data remains on the dark web forever. Who's helping you fix that? The plan is going forward that Reclaim will not only provide you with the transparency and the optionality around your data, we're going to help you with this increasing issue with security and AI. Those data breaches are leading to a massive inflection in class actions as well, so we'll also get into that. Okay, how do we make money? Everybody wants to know this. Okay, so to me, Reclaim is sort of the Uber of data. And this is a really easy concept, I think, for all of you to understand. The idea there is Uber doesn't own any cars. Airbnb doesn't own any chalets or cottages. When you decide to rent my chalet or take a ride with me as an Uber driver, Uber and Airbnb are facilitating that transaction between two independent parties. Reclaim does the same thing. I am buying this gentleman's data. He's choosing to sell it to me. Reclaim is in the middle, like a clearinghouse, a visa, taking a commission. Both parties are actually happy. One person's getting compliant data. The other person is getting compensated. Reclaim's happy because they're getting paid. The more data we sell, the more money we make. The more money that we make, the more money we can redistribute to consumers. That is the flywheel of Reclaim. We don't sell to small little shops. We're working with some of the biggest brands in the world. We work with over 100 individual brands. This is a cross-section of some of the people that we're working with. UPS, Novo, GM, Microsoft, and DoorDash. You'll see in the financials that we have a 90% recurring revenue ratio. Once these companies start working with us, they don't stop. So our op opportunity here is to not just work with General Motors in the United States on the Equinox, but to work with it on the Chevy Blazer, the Equinox, and every single individual nameplate. So there's a ton of opportunity for us to continue to grow the business. Okay, so back to sort of some of the stuff that Brent and Paul kind of talked about before. You know, I think we check a lot of those boxes as it relates to a business. So one, um, 
this is a real company with real clients that makes real money. Um, we're a profitable company and we're growing. I think that put typically puts us in rare air as it relates to microcaps in Canada. Um, I think the issue with this company is, is not a lot of people actually know about it. Um, last year was our first full year of profitability. To give you some context, you know, we made 800 plus thousand dollars in profit, a $5 million swing in 12 months. I'll explain that as to why that happens. Operating expenses were down. Revenue obviously was up 75% year over year. People look at this and they're like, wow, what a change. This is my, I've had five companies before these, all of them have exited. The formula for building companies is expensive at the beginning, especially when you're building software. There's a ton of CapEx that actually happens. I funded that CapEx, by the way. There's a ton of CapEx that actually happens at the beginning of the actual, of the company. But once you start to actually demonstrate an ability to drive revenue, you can then start to streamline the operation, which is where you get massive margin expansion. And this is the inflection point. I would say last year was really the inflection point for us where we continued to grow, but more importantly, we started to actually optimize the cost down. This is the formula going forward. People always ask me, Neil, how fast is Reclaim gonna grow? The, all, the answer is always, as, is always as fast as the cash flow permits, period. So for us, we do not believe in unprofitable growth. I'm allergic to that. A younger version of me used to do that all the time. I don't do that anymore. Especially what we find here in the micro cap market as a profitable company that's growing, operating at a high margin, it typically puts a bit of a floor underneath the stock. And as an investor, we think that that's actually pretty important. If you're burning cash as a concept stock, there's technically no floor underneath that individual company. So that was last year. So let's take a look at kind of how we're doing. Um, so one thing to keep, kind of keep in mind here is the back two quarters, there is seasonality in this business. 60 to 65% of the revenue actually books in the back two quarters. Um, for us, when you look at Q2, a couple of things to keep in mind, I'll show you on the next slide. Consistently 80% margin across the board, consistently 90% reoccurring revenue. There's always growth. Don't judge this company based on one quarter. Um, everybody's smart enough to do that. Again, we made money um, in, this pa in this past quarter and the revenue is only up about 5% from the, from the quarter uh, last year but we're projecting this year to finish probably between 30 and 40% over from where we finished last year. Um, and we're going to, again, continue to make money. Eighty percent. That's what the slide says. OK, um, rolling EBITDA. I think that this is just, again, a good good idea is that for us, the intention here is to always sort of demonstrate that, you know, our we're, our, we're trying to be fiscally responsible, grow the business as, as fast as we can without burning money. Um, for us moving forward, I think that's the, that's the, the plan. Other thing to kind of keep in mind, and you guys can look at this when you actually look at the financial statement. February 22, this was a tough time in the market. I think the stock was probably around two cents. We did actually, uh, we, did a, we did a placement here, uh, a debt placement at 1.6. I was half of that. So, um, and the reason that we did that is that we didn't actually want to do it specifically with stock. Um, I think the important part to kind of take from this is that we've been reducing this debt. And by the middle of next year, we think that this is going to be going to zero. So you have a company that's continuing to grow the balance sheet, the P&L, everything is getting better. Um, when people say to me, well, what would you do if you got a million dollars? We just get rid of this, first of all, like right off the hop. Um, as I said before, though, of that 920 that is remaining, I own half of that. So um, fair to say it's a friendly lender. Um, one other thing to kind of keep in mind, as I mentioned, the cap table is pretty tight. Um, when people ask me specifically, what's your plans to raise money? My answer is hopefully never again. Um, we don't have any intention of raising money in the future. So if you're investing in this company, um, you should be confident that, um, that you're not going to get diluted out because if you get diluted, I get diluted and nobody's happy with that. We have enough cash flow in this business to continue to grow it. And that's kind of how we're actually doing it. Um, we do have a bit of a back door here. Potentially we're not counting on this on some warrants. There's about 24 million warrants. Um, on the cap table now, every single one of them is at 10 cents. Every single one of them expires in June of next year. Um, some of them have come in, come in as the actual stock has gone up and down. Um, should a large percentage of these actually convert, 
There's two and a half million dollars approximately in cash that we could be applying to our cash flow positive business that's growing. We think that this is going to allow us to accelerate going forward. Um, a couple of other ideas to think about here as it relates to the product expansion. So for us, what do we sell? Historically, you as a brand or you as an agency have bought data from us or from the consumers to power your campaigns in programmatic or, or, in, or to use that data to make informed decisions. Over the past year and a half, we've expanded this product portfolio to not just sell a company data for, that they can make decisions on. We've expanded into social, so you can use reclaim data inside of Facebook, TikTok, Snap, any of the world's social platforms, we're in every single one of them. So if you're Unilever and you want to target specific individuals, but you want to do so with compliant data, you can do that with reclaim data. We've also recently expanded into YouTube. We're one of the only companies in the world that actually does this today. We've also expanded into search. So if you're a marketer today, the two things that you always start with are search and social. Reclaim data is available for any of these platforms. So if you want to use Google search, Facebook social, or YouTube for CTV, you as a brand can use Reclaim in all three of these things. The other thing that we've been doing has been a vertically integrated buy. This is probably too much detail. It's called a deal ID or a PMP, and that is taking our data and combining it with inventory. Um, this has been a huge catalyst for us, and the reason that we've done it is, candidly, it's better margin. Um, people were using our data to execute on million-dollar buys, and we were only getting a tiny percentage of that. Now, in order to gain access to our data, you must take it in this vertically integrated buy. Now we're getting 25 to 35% of that buy. There's a lot more margin in that. And so for us, it's been a big focus for us. I think the most important kind of thing to think through is that these, this type of execution represented 8% of our total revenue in 2023. Uh, it's 21% now as of Q2. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that if we get to the end of the year that 50% of our revenue is being derived from this type of uh, vertically integrated execution. Um, the other important thing here is we started here last year one, two, maybe three or four brands. Now we have 23 active brands running this execution with us on a month to month basis. It gives us a huge opportunity for us to grow. Another huge catalyst, which I made reference to at the very beginning is this change in privacy. Um, the most important thing that I always tell everybody as it relates to privacy is that you have to follow the privacy changes as well as the requirement around explicit opt-in. These are all the individual states that have actually changed the privacy legislation to make sure that if you want to use data from an individual in Indiana, you must have explicit opt-in. If you're a brand, that means you have to find a new partner, which means that we have an opportunity to actually secure a new partnership. When people ask us, what is our differentiation? This is it. You can buy data from thousands of firms, thousands of them, and there's a lot of undifferentiated ones. You cannot buy data from those firms that has explicit opt-in. So when some companies are really focused on selling automotive data, every brand that comes to us that is, has a requirement to buy data that has an explicit opt-in, we believe we're legitimately the only game in town. So think healthcare, think multicultural, think political. These are all, all requirements that, ha that are deemed what's called SPI. You need to have an explicit opt-in. So this is a bit of a mouthful, this, this acronym. These are all categories of SPI. Historically, you could just buy this data without ever having any inclusion from the individual consumer. That is now no longer the case in those 18 states. So if you are a brand in any of these individual categories, you need to find a new data partner and you need to work with a company like Reclaim. So when you're thinking through specifically as to like what's the catalyst for growth, this category is growing, the number of states is growing, so is our opportunity. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about AI and our, our involvement in AI. And I appreciate everyone wants to talk about AI and it can be super cliche and buzzy. So if you are interested in Reclaim, I would encourage you to read the MDNAs each quarter. I'm of the belief that I write the most detailed MDNA of any public company in, in the country. It's probably six to eight pages of everything that is happening in the market. I'd read it. And if you can follow along with it, I appreciate it. Can, the idea of reading an MDA is soul sucking, but just read the first six pages and you'll have a really good understanding as to like what the strategy is, why we're doing it. It'll make a lot of sense. So in this, I talk about AI all the time, but like my feeling on AI is that there's a hysteria around chips, fine. And then there's a hysteria around productivity, also fine. 
we're not in chips and we've already done the productivity piece of the equation. What's more interesting to me is do you have a product that generates real revenue that is complementary to your product that is based in AI? And so the challenge inside of Reclaim is how does Reclaim become an LLM? How does Reclaim become an AI engine? And so what we believe is that there's a bigger opportunity here specifically around this notion of actually building privacy tools specifically for consumers to help them re remediate some of these issues as it relates to data breaches. And so the statistics are very buzzy here. 350 million people in the United States were experiencing a data breach. You can do the math here. That means everybody was experiencing it within a data breach. Um, in 2024, there's already been 35 billion records that have already been compromised. Um, 9.4 million publicly disclosed data breaches, which means it's probably about four times higher than that. The other thing which should probably scare the shit out of you is that AI can pretty much break any single password that you have within less than a minute. And so this is a problem because security, I think we can appreciate that a lot of the security companies are falling behind the ability of the hackers. The hackers now have AI tools, which is going to arm them with more power than they've ever had before. Unless the data world changes, you can pretty much expect within the next 12 to 24 months, every single piece of data that you have to be circulating on the dark web. That's gonna happen. So for us at Reclaim, our theory here is, your CrowdStrike or your Life Labs or your Ticketmaster, you get hacked. Everybody in this room is exposed to that breach. Ticketmaster will suffer the consequences of a class action. They will pay that. But every single person in that Ticketmaster breach is, will have their data living on the dark web in perpetuity. That spam text message that you get from Roger Zerbell three times a day is a consequence of this. And there's really no fix around it. This to me is where there's a huge opportunity. And when I look at Reclaim, when we created Reclaim, the idea was that Reclaim users need to be able to see their data, then option their data and make compensation for their data. But we believe that the, the boat is bigger than that. And we believe that there's this intersection between compensation on one side of the equation and privacy on the other. And so if you think about it simplistically in the kind of the way of personas, compensate people that want to get paid for their data can be, can be thought of as a scavenger. People who want to lock everything down can be thought of an idealist. But in the Venn diagram in the middle is a pragmatist, somebody who understands that data actually works, but I want to have privacy, maybe I want compensation. And so the product portfolio of Reclaim, in addition to expanding to these other verticals, such as YouTube, social, et cetera, is now increasingly investing in AI and increasingly investing in the privacy tools to sit on top of the compensation model. So what have we launched? So we launched this um, probably about 30 days ago. Um, you can check this out. It's at AIReclaimYours.com. Um, this is the, f the, the world's first personal privacy assistant built in a large language model. Um, what does that mean? What this means is that if we use that example specifically like Ticketmaster, your questions that you want to ask can be answered by this individual large language model. What we did here is, my belief here around AI is that you either have a, either have a company that is actually invested in AI and has products in AI, or you don't have a company. For us, we've built this on the most progressive AI tools in the world today. Everybody talks about OpenAI and ChatGPT. We built this on Facebook's Llama 3 model using the fastest inference engine in the world called Grok. Um, you can actually go to this today, but in the middle of October will be the international and kind of the official launch. You can access it now as a beta, so don't worry, I'm not giving you any like information that's not publicly available. And the other thing to think about here is that it's also a SaaS based subscription model. So this new product, which we think is available to all those people that we talked about in the overall market, um, has the ability to add a new revenue stream to reclaim that is not factored into anybody's kind of projections. Um, I'm obviously biased on this, but I think that this, this product can be as big as reclaim within the first six months of its launches. Time will tell product features include real time, dark, dark, uh, real time data breach alerts. You'll be notified by Reclaim before anybody else. If and when your data has been breached, you won't have to learn about it from CNN or CP24. We think that this in itself will actually give us more credibility as a leader, specifically in the privacy space. Dark web monitoring, when your credit score, when your data is actually being used, you'll be actually flagged and told actually what you can do with it. The AI will actually then help you do remediation as to how to remove that data, how to enter you into class actions moving forward. 
And should you actually receive compensation from a class action, it will go into your reclaim wallet. Security remediation, where you're weak as it relates to um, your phone, your computer, your passwords, et cetera, and device and password management. Um, so last slide, sum it up, some reasons to invest in reclaim. What I always tell everybody here is that you don't have to invest in reclaim. You have to believe in the theme. If you believe in this idea that the data market is changing, that consumers are gonna be more involved, look across the public and private marketplace and find a company that's doing more and is further ahead than reclaim in the space. If you can find one, you should invest in them. If you can't, you should invest in us. This is a profitable company and will always will be. We're a growing company, we always will be. The margin at 80%, the recurring revenue at 90%, a strong balance sheet and getting better. As I said before, I'm the largest owner. Um, we're recently introducing a share buyback program. So again, that will help as well. Tier one clients, um, you just don't start working with FedEx, UPS, General Motors, DoorDash, and Microsoft. You have to get through a huge vetting process. Obviously, we talked enormously about the privacy changes, the size of the overall market, and the introduction of AI. Uh, I'm here today and tomorrow, and I'm here till Friday morning. So we have a booth. Anybody who wants any more information, please, you can, you can email me at neil at reclaimyours.com, investor relations at, at reclaimyours.com. Find me on LinkedIn, find me on Twitter. I'm always working. Thanks. And Neil, by the way, all the companies are doing one-on-ones. Everybody's set up. So when he means the booth, it's going to be at his table just next door in ballroom C. Cool. All right.